uh, introduction of late items. Um, are there any late items? Uh, Step on up, yes. No late no. items. Um, adoption of the minutes, um, the minutes of the last meeting. Um, did everybody read those and can we adopt those? Um, quick. Um, can you, uh, any comments regarding the minutes that may be incorrect or can we approve the minutes? No, I approve them. Okay, I approve them as well. Is Chris there? I can see Chris. Yeah. Chris. Christopher, we haven't met you yet. Chris, can you verbally approve the minutes? Uh -oh. He hates the minutes. Okay. No, we Fritz, we need him. Where, so you don't know if Chris is there? It's, he was here. I saw his name just now. Yeah. So shall we phone him? <laughs> yeah, I'm calling him right now. Hi, Emma, how are you? It looks like Roman is here, so he keeps staring at us, but that's just a pretty picture of her. Right, Roman? <laughs> I, I am here, I'll just wait until it's my turn. I won't jump in early. <laughs> It looks like you're here. <laughs> okay, so um, we have to find Chris, right? Ah, here, Christopher's iPad. So he should be there. Hello. There he is. Hi, Christopher. I've been here the whole time, but I'm having a bit of trouble. I mean, just got off the ferry in Horseshoe Bay. Okay. So here I am. Thank you for joining us. You're good. You're being asked about the minutes. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, Chris, the question is: We want to adopt the minutes of the April Board of Variance meeting, and can you confirm that you approve those or not? Yeah, I've read the minutes and I approve. Okay. All right, so that's three approvals. Um, this is for the parents meeting. I don't know if it's normal to have public comments at this point, but is that- No, normal? so the public comments, well, they're a little bit different for the um, um, Board of Variants. It'll take place after um, the presentation. So, which I guess happens. So Emma, start, right, with the presentation. Sorry? Emma? Yeah, Emma has it. Start with the presentation, right? Yeah. Okay. I think you can do that now. Mm -hmm. And we have one Chris sitting in his automobile. Mm -hmm. Yes. With a little bit too bright a uh, background, but we're, we're going to be okay. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so should I jump into the presentation? Yes, please. Okay, I'm just going to start sharing screen. <clears throat> I believe the first one is uh, for 1289 Scarborough. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay, excellent. Um, so this is application number BOV 2021 uh -huh. And um, as mentioned, this is 1289 Scarborough Road. For context, this is in the Scarborough oh. neighborhood on the east side of the island. Please let me know if my mic is acting up. It does that once in a while. Um, this property is located in the Settlement oh. Residential 2 or SR2 zone as shown in the zoning map here. The SR2 zone has a minimum building setback of 7.5 meters from the rear lot line and three meters from any side lot line. So those setbacks are shown here on this site plan in the heavy dashed line that represents the setback where uh, buildings should not be built 
<laughs> between this line and the property line. As you can see, there is an existing house on this property and it is accessed by an existing gravel driveway that allows access to the entrance of the main dwelling. There is also a secondary suite in this dwelling and it is accessed through the rear um, on this side of the house. <clears throat> And this is the parking for the secondary suite as required. There is a slight grade change here adjacent to the gravel driveway and there is a low retaining wall um, in that area. <clears throat> there are two existing accessory buildings shown in the orange here. And those are essentially set right up to the property line, meaning they have a zero setback. The proposal is to replace those two existing accessory buildings with a single accessory building to serve as a garage and workshop space. Um, as you can see, the proposed building is also within the required setbacks. So the variance requested to facilitate construction of this proposed building is to reduce the rear setback from 7.5 meters to 0.76 meters, and to reduce the required three meter side setback to 0.76 meters, as shown here. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, the reasons for this variance request is um, essentially limited building sites available on this lot. That's due to the relatively steep topography. It slopes away from Scarborough um, Road on the west side, and it's actually accessed from the rear, as you can tell where the driveway is. Um, the existing driveway does take up uh, quite a bit of the, the, the lot outside of these setbacks. And then to the north, if you remember, there's an existing access easement where nothing can be built. So this area has already been built on with the existing sheds. Um, so it's an existing fairly flat buildable site. It is also um, tucked away, snug against this retaining wall. So it's fairly um, a negligible impact in terms of views on their neighbors, which you can see in this site visit photo. This is the neighbor to the south and it is, is quite higher sits quite higher than the proposed building site. Uh, you can also see the driveway and um, that it's fairly steep. Uh, this is a temporary structure. These are the two existing uh, accessory buildings and the lot line is, is right up against the back of this building here. These are some elevations of what the proposed building will look like. And it is designed to match the existing aesthetic of the neighborhood, the existing house, as well as the surrounding houses. Um, and from this view um, in this photograph, it would match up with this elevation in the top right hand corner. So you can see that the garage will be a carport, it's fairly open, and then there is an enclosed workshop space to the right. Neighbor, neighbor support has been received by uh, from all five immediately adjacent neighbors, as you can see in this map, and no other comments were received during the public notice period. As far as alternative options, given the site constraints on this lot, for the purpose of a garage workshop building, there really are not um, any alternative options that, oops, that wouldn't require um, significant um, cost and effort in terms of relocating either the existing dwelling or reconfiguring where the entrances would be um, or creating a new driveway access. So given, given the existing development on this site, there are no viable alternative options for this proposed garage building. And as usual, just wanted to um, end with the Board of Variance checklist in terms of um, what the legislation uh, requires the board to consider in these types of applications, that the variance requested is considered minor. And if the applicant or any person notified wishes to speak, the board has the obligation to hear them. The variance um, 
the board should find undue hardship if the variance were not granted. And a list of uh, considerations for the variance in terms of how it would impact the environment or the neighborhood and um, that it is consistent with the intended land use for the area. Any questions? I'm happy to answer it now. That's, that's pretty much the end of this presentation. Fritz, I think you're still on mute. Sorry, I muted everybody because there was background noise when Emma was presenting. You know, I said, so the uh, um, uh, attached were also the um, five letters from the uh, neighbors, um, you know, which are, of course, uh, important. So now the uh, next part, um, it says the um, opportunity of the public to speak. So is there any neighbors or people affected that like to speak? I don't have any submissions from the public to speak. Okay, then we have the applicants, Rebecca and Andreas. Would they like to speak? Hi, thanks. Um, Emma, I, I think Emma did a great job of prevent, presenting what we want to do. Also, just to note, I think that like just doing some basic landscaping around the new building just will make it look less like a construction zone and kind of more like an actual finished house, which I think you know, the five neighbors that we have around us, I think everybody's kind of into fixing up this area, which has historically been maybe not cared for as much as as some other neighborhoods on the island so i think everybody's just kind of into doing that and also to note that we all have a shared driveway as well so it will um the two spaces will provide uh better parking for us um and then you know, less parking on the actual shared driveway portion. I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we move on to the um, board of variance discussion. <clears throat> so, um, Rick or Chris, would you like to start, please, with your comments? <clears throat> Are you still muted, um, Rick? If you, Rick, you still muted? I think. Okay. There. Yeah. Well, I just had a I had a question. I was wondering on the rear yard um, why the building was there any a, a consideration of the building being shifted forward towards the house, maybe another three or four feet there. It seemed to me it would help the grading and getting access into the garage area itself. Uh, I didn't know what, what the what the reason was. Is there any restriction there? Um, who should answer that question? Maybe the applicants? Um, um, I think that how, where we'd like to build it, it takes up the least amount of space and it's actually easily accessed by our current driveway. Um, there's an area just to pull right into this proposed carport. Whereas uh, if we put it closer to the house, it's a steeper grade. Um, we're using up space that is potentially a bit of our yard. Um, and then we're also not using space that is like, it's just generally unusable space. Mm -hmm. I'll just add a, a point to in the corner of the carport there. That's going to be um, pushed too far into the driveway if we move if we were to move it over further, and then we'd have to uh, do it just wouldn't function with our driveway as it is right now, and we wouldn't be able to access our front door area. Okay, um, Rick, 
Do you have more questions? Yeah, no, it just looked to me like there was about three or four feet there that was still available uh, to get the building over to the corner of the driveway there, which would give you a little bit more room in the rear yard. But um, uh, you mean it actually mean moving uh, it up the hill or closer to the neighbor to the east? I think that would, like Andy said, because part of the driveway goes up the side of the house, which is actually our front door. Okay. So that would block that part of the driveway if the building was moved out. I think that Fritz came and looked at it yesterday and the topography of like the whole lot just kind of makes it a little bit difficult. And then on the other side of the house, there's a water easement for Cove Bay. So we can't do anything on that side. Yeah. Uh, would it help if I put the site plan up yeah, on your screen? Yeah, yeah. Good just really quick. So this is the proposed site. And Rick, I believe you're asking if it could be moved further in from the setbacks. Is that what you're asking? No, only from the rear yard. Slipped Only up. For, so this way. The same or this way? Until it's the left. Well, I can also show the um, this this photo from the site visit, I think shows it quite well. Um, it's sitting up against a bit of a rock um, outcropping here. Mm -hmm. So it, it would require removal of this tree and blasting of some rock to push it further up the hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. And then that where those two people are standing in that um, picture, we actually drive one of our cars up further past that and park up there on the side of the house. And, mm -hmm. and that, that goes to where our front door is. Yeah. So that would, uh, so it it's would not kind really of, shown yeah. in the site plan, but it would be here yeah. in this area yeah. and the front entrance is on this side of the house. So Rick, I don't yeah. know if everyone can see my mouse. So I'm waving it around. <laughs> Emma? Yes. Am I, on? I have a different site plan than you sent, that you sent me that from what you're showing on the screen. And it's not, it's significantly different as to the location of the setback, at, um, to the, the dashed line representing this, the setback enclosure. Oh. Sorry, this one, I just noticed I had superimposed the setback. This this line is moved. Sorry for the confusion. Oh. Okay, there. that was different. Yeah, that was the difference. I must have moved but it by accident. I guess it does make a difference where it, where it ends up. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rick, do you have, are you satisfied with the answers that we got this far? More, have more questions? Yeah, I, I no, I think that's fine. I, I, um, I, I guess they're on the setback area. They landscape that strip. Are you along the edge of that uh, new building? Absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna get a machine in and do a bunch of stuff. And the uh, we'll be replacing the neighbor's fence along that side too. And um, I mean, on the on the south side with the rock wall, the uh, roof line will just be a little be below their fence and we'll be, you know, backfilling behind the concrete. So to mm -hmm. even that all out. So, okay. Okay. Chris, you have questions? Okay. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. We're just on a zoom meeting here. Sorry. Bye. Okay. So where are you parked? <laughs> I'm parked in front of the uh, little docks on the bay and horseshoe bay here. Oh, okay. One, one, of the neighbors, one of the neighbors who's a friend of ours just came by to tell me my lights were still on. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, it all seems to work. Yeah. Um, Chris, did you have more questions or questions at all? Um, yeah, where does that driveway come from? Uh, Andy should, I like it if the applicant first answers the questions. So Andy and Rebecca, can you answer? The, the driveway comes from the corner of Scarborough Road and Eagle Cliff. It's a shared driveway with 
uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven houses on it. But two go in the opposite direction. It kind of veers off. It's um interesting Bowen Island anomaly, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. our our address is off Scarborough, but the other two houses at the end of the road of our driveway are actually Eagle Cliff. So mm -hmm. so the road is actually sort of going up an e a hydro yeah. easement initially, and then it comes in and is a shared driveway between the four houses. Uh, heading towards Scarborough here. Yeah. So you loop back up around to our house. You actually drive past it on the main road, go around the corner. I don't know, Emma, if you could show sort of on the, uh, on the um, property, uh, property picture you have there, you can maybe sort of show how it goes in with your cursor. That would help. So, um, Emma, are you are you speaking or not? Um, I'm not speaking yet. <laughs> I've just unmuted. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So, what am I showing? Emma, can you on slide ten? It might show it. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Exactly. Comes through here. Uh, no. Comes through here. No. 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 Sorry. No. Uh, corner. The corner of Scarborough Road there, yeah, yeah. and then loops Here. up and oh. around 1297, in between 1297 and, and 1288. Yeah. yeah, like that. Yeah. So uh, between, the, uh, those, between those two lots, there's another easement that's not shown here? Yeah. 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 Is, there, is there a panel showing that actual uh, configuration and the easement? No, we would need uh, survey plans of those other lots, but we don't have them. This just shows property lines. So, you know, we actually, Chris, sorry. Chris, that uh, it actually really, I found it really quite interesting, uh, a revelation, so to speak. Uh, when you finally do find them, um, because the address is definitely confusing, um, and you drive down there, it is. It's, it's actually wider than the lane because it gives access to a lot of garages. When you first arrive there, it almost feels like it's a shared open space. It just happens to be mostly gravel because everybody has to drive their cars. But what it does do, it's again, I find really interesting, is that when you come down Scarborough Road um, uh, and uh, drive around all the way down to that lane, you loop around, you actually find yourself in a protected little cluster. You know what I mean? And it's so clever about it because if you would have had direct access from Scarborough, you know, as you come down from Miller's Road, um, that would almost destroy that sense of, of privacy and being secluded. So except that it may be a little difficult for people to find. Um, it actually is really nicely, it's a nice way that these houses are arranged together. So it, it is actually something that is really nice and let's, let's um, accept that there is a, a legal um, a easement there, which is a good question, but um, yeah. you know, it is there, right? So it's just not shown. Right. And, All right. And then, and then what happens too is that um, the the corner that's proposed to put the um, carport and the uh, workshop in is, from my point of view, clearly, clearly the best location. Um, first of all, Andreas just mentioned a little while ago, is that amazingly enough, um, the top of the complete development, proposed development, is below the top of the fence that sits on a high stacked boulder wall and that stacked boulder wall is there to stay if you look at it it's really definitely built by the uh, developer that did the subdivision so then um also if you would move it anywhere else i believe that it has not just negative impact on the owners but also on the other owners because the idea that they can see their house is in my mind also important because they share that common space. 
Um, the obviously, if you look at if you look at the drawing that you see now, because the house is skewed, it sits under 30 degrees or so on the lot, it really tightens up at all the corners. You feel you drive into a funnel kind of, and then the topography definitely goes up towards the back of the lot, particularly steep when you walk around the house towards the front door, which is the front door from Scarborough on the left, but certainly not from uh, the driveway. So the, um, so just like, I kind of think that the location is, it makes sense. If you look at the lot towards the east, um, uh, it's the proposal is that it's an open carport, which even makes it nicer than what is there now, because there's no obstruction at all. And the house towards the east is way set back. There's a large kind of open glass uh, yard there. The, um, it, what uh, Andreas and Rebecca said about the rock and the tree, that's definitely true because like um, if you would move it more up the hill, it would certainly require that to be removed. Um, so then the, um, the other notes that I kind of made um, is the, um, oh yeah, what I also found kind of right about this approach is that there is no added driveway. Like, like, like for instance, if you do a, uh, a plan for a single family home, uh, in most municipalities, you go through these painstaking calculations of permeable areas and non-permeable. It's all the ideas that the land drains better. So here there is no added um, driveway, so hard surfaces. It goes directly uh, onto the driveway that already uh, exists. The, um, uh, so the neighbor's views are definitely prefer, uh, protected. So if you look at the, uh, for instance, that window right behind the trees, the windows of the house that's there, they are all not affected. And the uh, yard from the neighbor, if the neighbor steps into the yard, they are um, something like six feet maybe above the uh, grade of the proposed uh, garage. Um, so the, um, yeah, I think that was kind of, kind of it. And then I thought the, if it's like, if you go towards the, um, you know, the board of fairings, like Emma made us aware that, um, you know, it has to be a minor variance. In the big picture, it's always hard to determine what is a minor and how minor something should be, but it certainly has, no impact on the neighbors. I would actually think it only has positive impact on the neighbors because what's there now is really less attractive. Um, and also the fact that it is an open structure. Um, then, um, so the, um, uh, what we also need, are there, I guess I should ask, are there more uh, questions from uh, Chris or Rick? Um, if we finish the discussion of the board, and we should first um, check uh, or confirm uh, that the people, the, the persons that can be affected are notified, which I believe is clearly done, you know, with the five uh, uh, surrounding neighbors, which is quite uh, amazing to get that solid support. Um, so then the, um, then what uh, Emma made us aware we should uh, focus on. Um, so is it an appropriate or inappropriate development? In my mind, it is appropriate. Um, adverse impacts on the environment. I cannot see any, maybe somebody can. Um, impact on neighbors. I think we addressed that. In my mind, there is no negative impact on neighbors. Um, permitted use and densities, it's a single family neighborhood. And the idea is that it maintains the uh, single family character, which in my mind it clearly does. And is the intent of the bylaw, intent of bylaw to be defeated? Now, um, Emma can maybe comment on that, but if the bylaw is the land use bylaw, then I would say, no, it uh, is, definitely 
um, in line with the objectives of uh, having a single family uh, neighborhood uh, in the SR2 zone. Could I just add to that really quickly? Um, I think it is talking about the intent of the setback that's uh, going to be reduced. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, okay, that actually is a good point. So the, the setback towards the neighbor of the south, um, I would say that because it's so much, it sits six feet lower and it has no negative impact in the specific area, that, uh, that would not be an issue in my mind. And the setback towards the neighbor to the east, um, because that house is setback itself that much, at, in the current situation, I cannot see that there is any, uh, any issue. Um, like for, for single family homes, um, you know, like there's a rear setback of 7.5 meters. But as you probably know, that, that um, so Emma, can you maybe help with that? Like if you have an um, uh, accessory building, right? Like a small structure, can it actually be closer to the, um, the rear yard setback? Yeah, the, um, for all zones, if, you're, if your accessory building is less than um, 10 square meters in area, which this one is greater than, um, but if it is smaller than that and it is less than 2.5, five meters in height, it could be set, uh, it could be built right up to the lot line on any lot. Yeah, so the only thing that maybe that makes you aware of that there could have been something that could be legally built to have an access mm -hmm. function. Mm -hmm. So those two existing sheds are probably, they probably fall within that exemption. So they're sited right up to the lot line. and. I believe the intent or, or the general intent of those setbacks is that if you get a larger structure and it's more mass, more bulk, that um, it's set back further to have less impact on views for neighbors and to avoid the, the crowded effect. Right. Okay. Um, so then uh, to, um, so, I believe we're ready to make some recommendations. Is that true? Um, okay, so I've, I've, I've knocked out something similar to the ones we did for the last meeting, or there were quite a few whereases that address the yeah. list and provide. Um, I don't know that this is exactly what you're saying. So why don't we take a look at it together and make sure, uh, please yeah, go I, for I, 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 that, that seems, that seems to be the way to do it. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna take over, Emma, if that's okay. Yeah. Perfect. So can you see this screen? No, but I have it in front of me because it's in our it's in our minutes of the last meeting on the Oh okay. Okay. Well so I've just the screen that I'm sharing has the just a list of, of um word variance checklist and then what I sort of knocked out um, regarding this proposal. Uh, can you see it now, Fritz? Yeah, I wouldn't say it has positive in Yeah, it has, how do we say that? It doesn't, okay. it doesn't neg negatively affect um, the views from the neighbors, but if it has any positive impact, it is, it has, um, how do I say that? It's, uh, it, it adds to the uh, residential the, the residential character of okay the so I put that so the negative does not negatively affect neighborhood views and then the next bullet um, you were talking about the intent of land use bylaw number 57 is to regarding the neighborhood character yeah I would say it's enhanced right oh it, enhanced okay <laughs> and then what's the zoning Emma <laughs> <laughs> Forget preserved. Yeah, um, I'm already. Settlement, sorry, settlement residential two. SS two. SR two. SR two. SR two. Okay. So the second bullet, the intent of land use bylaw number fifty seven zoning SR two is to 
or to have neighborhood character is enhanced? Yeah, okay, that's probably good enough. Um, nope, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, I would say whereas the application has the support of all um, adjacent neighbors, so five adjacent. Uh, is five the accurate number? Yeah, I think so. Okay, of all five. Uh, Steph, I'm just going to say the intent of the land use bylaw zoning SR2, I think it's to maintain neighborhood character. Yeah, okay. You're not allowed to maintain. You can still maintain and enhance it, right? Or not? No, it's getting rid of have. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, that's good. Uh, the next one, I think, is fine the way it's written about the topography. I'm going to number these for now just to make it easier to talk about. Uh, number four. The applicant has demonstrated that the topography of the property causes undue hardship regarding access to front entrance and driveway. Yes. A uh, two story. Yeah, you can add maybe because I think that is relevant and it prevents the uh, removal of a. Of so that's the number five. It says. Yeah. Um, okay, good. So that's from the rock remove. Uh, Massive rock removal. So we'll say to avoid, it's not massive, removal of rock outcropping. I'll take the word massive out. Can you just, just, yeah, yeah, that was from Penny's. Avoid um, removal of rock outcropping. And were there two trees there, Emma? One tree. One tree. Let me see what. And removal of one tree to avoid removal of one tree. And I'll just say one tree, okay. Um, is the only suitable location a little extreme or? So the, the hardship, I'm not sure if we already said that, but in the beginning, it should say, it should relate to the unusual rotative orientation of the existing house on the property. Because um, of, so can that go in number four, do you think? Yeah, well, instead, and, and bullet number four, instead of topography, maybe unusual rotated orientation? I may mean, say the topography ends, you know? Sorry? And, and the... Um, okay, topography the, and unusual... Yeah. Rot rotated orientation of the existing home on the lot. So the of the property topography of the property and the mutual rotated orientation of the existing home on the lot. Yeah. Okay. So now we have to and you you also noticed um, limited building area, right? As in um, Emma's report. Limited building area? Yeah. Because that's a result of the way that all those. And that can go under undue hardship? Yeah, because like, so the, the topography and the. Okay. Uh, so it results in limited building area? Limited suitable building area. Okay. Limited suitable and causes undue hardship. And maybe I also like that it's. Um, it adds that some of you put in that the neighbors, the, the neighbors to the south, right, at the top of the proposed carport structure, the ridge of the carport structure, yeah. is below the fence, the top of the fence that sits on top of the retaining wall, the rock retaining wall for the south neighbor. Sorry, Fitz? So I think it's nice to, to, to add to it, where the view are unobstructed in that one, that the, um, that the top of the fence of the, to the south is located 
located on top of the existing rock retaining wall. So the top of that fence is above the top, the ridge of the proposed uh, carport structure. Um, There's nothing you see. <laughs> Well, that's sort of about the views, isn't it? Don't we well, already cover that in the first bullet? Well, views, you have to say views, it's normally views from the house. So like if people want okay. to say view is obstructed, they normally the Okay. Road. The actual uh, garden, which is their rear garden of history, I guess. Um, their rear garden is not obscured or not blocked, so to speak. You know, and at times, of course, this is the north, but at times it's not just views, it is, you know, massing, it's, it's light access, it's, you know, all that kind of things. Okay. But you don't feel there's a neighbor there, that's for your thing. Okay. Okay, so you want to- I've got seven bullets. Okay, anybody Chris, want- Can you see this or Rick, can you see them? Yes, I can. Do you have anything to say? <clears throat> uh, the, only, the only suggestion I would have is they take the square footage of this new building and either move it up or down one square foot because 666 is not a good omen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this is, uh, okay. Anyways, Christopher, do you have anything to say? <laughs> okay, that is item eight. <laughs> Bullet eight. <laughs> item eight. Do, 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 do. Uh. Chris, you can't see this on your phone, can you? Here, I got it. You need to unmute. Here, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was trying to say, I didn't realize I was muted. How do I keep muting? I'm muting you because there's a lot of traffic noise in your world there. <clears throat> I, had a, I had a feeling you were cutting me out here. Because <laughs> 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 every time I tried to say something, nobody was listening. Oh, no, it's not personal. I, <laughs> all, all, all the rest of you make so much more sense anyway. It's fine. <laughs> the say one thing now. I was going I was trying to point out in that last discussion that what oh, yeah. uh, the, was from from the perspective of the house, we're talking about views, and then it it it, it seems to me what we were talking about, you know, from the other direction is privacy, and I think the significance of that fence being the top of the fence being higher than the ridge of the proposed structure is that it, it, it's, an in, it's an indication that the privacy of the people to the higher point are, is not being ch changed or infringed. So I can say reserves here then. Yeah, That's yeah I, don't, I, don't think we, I don't think we had keyed in on the privacy as, as opposed to the views, which might be worth doing. Perfect. So I've added um, preserves privacy to bullet four. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay. You you agree, Fritz? No, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Fritz, the devil agrees. I mean, Rick. Yeah, that's fine. So, do we need to vote now? Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. I am. Chris and Rick, are you ready? To vote? It sure. sounded to me. It sounds to me like a gimme. <laughs> so yeah, I'm. Approval for me. Approval for me. Okay, can you raise your hand? Visual sign. Okay. Unanimously approved. Okay. Uh, Emma, thank you for the uh, presentation, for putting all that material together. That's great. Very clear. And Steph, for always somehow coming up with all these <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to send this around by email for just for you guys to have a quick look since um, Chris is on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I appreciate it.
Thank you, Andy and Becca. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, now the now the long process gets started. Thank you. Now the work begins. You have to build it, man. You need to build it. Yeah. <laughs> now I can use up all my lumber I've been storing for so long. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're very uh, lucky. So Andy, uh, planning will be in touch. We'll send you a formal letter and it'll be on the property file. Perfect. Thanks, Emma. Okay. You can go okay, or you can stay for the, for the Carter Road one if it's the way you like to spend an hour. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Okay. Thanks. Emma? <laughs> Okay, so um, the next item is 650 Carter Road. And I think, uh, Emma, you would just start with your uh, presentation. Can we do that now? Okay. Share screen. Hopefully that's showing up for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this application is for BOV 2021-0173. The address is 650 Carter Road. And, oh, Steph, are you saying something? No, okay. Um, this is the Bowen Island Children's Center, um, just for, for reference. And this is the orthophoto of the extent of the lot. And it is located um, just uh, west of Snug Cove. It is in a comprehensive development zone, um, CD2 area six, as shown in the zoning map. And this zone has a minimum setback of three meters from side lot lines. And there is also a visibility setback that applies to all lots, and that's 4.6 meters from any lot line abutting a highway. So as you remember, the frontage on this lot is on Carter Road, so that's 4.6 meters setback from Carter Road. This is a close-up of the um, site, and there is an existing daycare facility shown here and an existing sandbox that recently um, had a roof structure constructed above it. The sandbox is entirely within the 30 meter setback of a riparian stream, so it is in, in a riparian assessment area. The proposed development is a roof for the current entry to the daycare facility. And this covered roof is uh, funded by a grant, a COVID grant, to help facilitate physical distancing, especially during the busy pickup and drop off times. The retro, uh, the sandbox roof structure, which is already built, is also part of this variance um, retroactively. And the sandbox roof was built to help provide more sheltered outdoor play area for the children. So to facilitate this development seen here, the applicant is requesting a reduction of the side setback from three meters to zero, as well as a reduction of the visibility setback from 4.6 meters to zero, as shown here. The dotted line is the required setback. I don't know if that's showing up well on your screens, but both structures are definitely within the 4.6 meter visibility setback. Um, oh, the, the reasons which I already just covered, sorry, um, for this request is for more sheltered outdoor play area, as well as physical distancing for the busy pickup drop off times. Photos from the site visit, there is a temporary structure above that entrance right now, and the proposed structure will be larger in area, and it will be a wood structure with an aluminum roofing. This is a photo of the existing uh, roof structure over the sandbox, and it is also a wood structure. 
In terms of viable alternative options for this type of development, um, there really is no viable options. Um, maybe if I go back to the site plan, the larger site plan here, you can see that the property um, already has an existing daycare facility and outdoor play area, which is right up against the Carter Road property line. So to have uh, any alternative sightings would mean relocating the facility um, or uh, providing a, a completely different entrance and play area. And that would be uh, of significant cost to, to the uh, Bowen Children's Center. Just run through all these slides again. Um, that does bring us to the checklist. The only addition I have uh, as far as information is that regarding the impact to environment, as mentioned, the roof of the sandbox is within a riparian area. A development permit has been submitted and is, is currently active and in progress to address the impacts on the environment. And that structure would require completion of that development permit to ensure that there are no negative impacts on the environment. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so then it says uh, submissions of support. Um, I think there was a text, right, with the signatures from various people. Emma? Uh, this, application, this application did not submit any letters of support. Oh. All right, okay. Oh yeah, you're right. It's five for one for the ones. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I expect that there is some support, though. <laughs> it's hard to believe that none of the <laughs> parents would support this. But anyway, so mm -hmm. um, let's skip that one up. Um, so the public opportunity to speak to the board. Are there any persons who are want to speak? No. Okay. Um, then I believe that the applicant, uh, Robin, I believe, um, will do. A, will speak to the board. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, and apologies, we didn't organize any letters of support. It was. Um, a, it's been a bit of a scramble to organize the uh, permits for all of the various things happening at the children's center. And um, and given and one of my points that I was going to bring up, there's. Um, I don't want to say there's no neighbors, but if you're familiar with the Children's Center, it's a fairly isolated location. There certainly are no um, directly adjacent residential neighbors. Um, and so uh, it has very low impact on, on the surrounding properties, um, which are, are generally green space at this moment. Um, and uh, as Emma mentioned, we have a development permit underway for the riparian assessment um, for the creek and everything. All the information we have so far is that there is no impact on the creek. Um, and so we'll have a, an official document from a qualified environmental professional uh, in the next week or so to uh, confirm that. Um, and as I think Emma did a great job, uh, it's really this was spurred on by COVID and there were grants available. So they got this COVID funding to provide the covered entry because now of course with drop off, they don't want people coming into the building and even it's better to play, stay out of the play space. So they erected that temporary, um, you know, just temporary metal structure uh, so that it was covered as the parents dropped off, but they'd like to make it more permanent. And one small correction, which Emma, you may not have been aware of, um, that front entry will now be a full aluminum framed and glass, just we wanted to make it really as um, invisible as possible. So it's very lightweight. Uh, it should be very low impact from the street, which um, if you remember the photo, it has sort of a black metal fence. And so it'll just be black metal, you know, aluminum, really slim line post and a glass roof. So it's meant to be very minimal visual impact. Um, and, uh, and then the uh, play structure the, uh, over the sandbox that was accidentally built without a permit, which the clients just, because uh, they had the grant funding and they didn't realize that they needed a permit. So we've been working with them to go through all of those steps uh, to make sure it's done properly and, and, um, and it gets fully permitted. So yeah, really, I think Emma's pretty much said it all. And uh, the only thing that I might add, if you're not as familiar with the site is it really is quite restrictive. Like if, if um, you've been there, it's a fairly steep site where the building's built, it goes, drops off very steeply one side down to a lower parking area. They've built up the play areas and sort of two levels and it drops off very steeply down to the creek. So there really is not a lot of extra room to play. Um, and they are very close to the street setback. But as you can see in the photos in the site plan, the actual asphalt, like the property line shows here, but there's a fair setback to the actual asphalt and the line of the road. So uh, visually it is a fair bit setback from the road. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. And of course, if you have questions, I'm here to answer them. Okay. Um, so now we go to next, I guess, the members of the board. Uh, Chris or Rick, uh, one of you would like to start. Uh, when I went down and had a, had a look uh, the other day, I was wondering, uh, since the, the new sandbox structure is on the property line right now, uh, it's up high, uh, a little higher off the road, of course, which means that they, I guess the fence is being constructed on the opposite side of the property line, probably four or five feet of the city property then, is that correct? Uh, Robin, can you answer that? Um, uh, it has not been fully surveyed, but um, I believe, yes, from the similar things to, to what you've said, I believe that um, uh, just based on being there physically on site, that the fence line, which I can't confirm when that was built, but a number of years ago uh, was built encroaching on the municipal property and uh, on the road allowance. And I have broached it with the clients and they know that, um, you know, sometime in the future, it is something that they should address with the municipality, but it wasn't sort of deemed urgent at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. My second question is the existing building, uh, is that also encroaching into the setback? Mm, yes, and I think Emma could probably, well, not encroaching, um, Emma might be able to answer as well. They built what's called the infant toddler wing, which is that one that's the closest road where this new glass structure will connect. And that was built, I believe, in the last two or three years, and it also had a variance that was approved. So it's been built legally in that position, but it's that setback was relaxed to allow the construction of that building. And again, because of the constraints of the site. Yeah. Okay. So my, my biggest concern is, um, uh, and I've run into this in my business many times before, is the safety issue. Uh, that new structure at the front, the covered structure, uh, especially through the winter months, you're going to have a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of the kids uh, waiting to be picked up or dropped off at that point. Um, and it is relatively close to the road. And I, I do notice that you've got a few large boulders in there. But uh, my suggestion would be because it's right on the property line, and there's a lot of traffic coming and going there at certain times of the year. Um, that maybe some consideration should be given for a, a few steel bollards put um, just in front of that uh, uh, that uh, that canopy that you're planning and building in there. Um, if a, you know if a car gets loose or something happens in wet weather or whatever, it, it could do a lot of damage to a lot of people there. So uh, you might want to consider that to see if that. Um, but I think the safety issue in this case being that close to the road is pretty important. I can certainly pass that along and I know that's why exactly as you point out the boulders are there they sort of opted for those as physical barriers uh, aesthetically instead of steel bollards I can certainly mention it um, but if you look at the photos where the existing fence line is where this roof will be so it is actually already the drop-off point so it's an existing condition um, so the nothing will change and it is a very um, transient point like it's a drop-off and pickup so so generally kids aren't hanging around there and lingering uh, it's very active so people are coming and going and moving around so uh, but agreed at, at those peak pickup and drop-off times there's a lot of people and I believe that's why they've got those boulders there so I can certainly pass on that safety concern and see if maybe that's something they could um, improve on maybe even adding uh, more or slightly larger boulders in front of that once it's um once the work's complete okay thank you okay uh Chris Chris can I hear you you have to um you're um Block, you're uh, muted. Steph muted, muted me again, I think. <laughs> it's so noisy in your area. I've got the windows open. It's baking in here. Oh. Okay. Well, open okay. the windows. I'll mute you. No, I, I uh, unmute me, please. So I don't think I have any comments. This seems like a reasonable proposal, some of which has already been implemented. Okay, um, I don't have too many comments, but more on, I'm just a bit puzzled what, um, uh, what Rick said earlier. So there is no survey done, right? So like, for instance, if you take the sandbox, is it in a general location or is that the precise location? It doesn't matter, but I'm just wondering. <laughs> 
We have sort of a partial survey that I've been working off of from a few years ago. Um, and we, we feel reasonably comfortable that we've got it located where it needs to be within the property. But if that is a concern, then we would have to um, have the clients get it properly surveyed. Um, well, but we're, yeah. For me, you know, for me, it's not a concern. It's just that, you know, if the survey is done and suddenly it sticks out, then, um, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, if it doesn't disturb anybody, I don't think it will ever be an issue. But I just mm -hmm. want like how you uh, decided to locate things where they are. Uh, maybe the other question is if there is a line shown on the diagram, which I believe is the fence, is that correct? Behind the building? And that fence goes really close to us, the, it's then the line stops. Can you get it on the screen maybe? The, and Fritz, I could answer that question that you just asked a moment ago about where they placed it. It was actually sort of vaguely the location of an existing play area that I think they had previously a smaller play box, uh, sandbox, and they expanded it and wanted to put a roof over. So when you're on site, and again, acknowledging that the, the fences are not necessarily on the property line, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense where they placed it because it is set back from the fence lines and there's an existing tree on that Carter Road side. So the physical placement on site made a lot of sense, but when you actually overlay it with the property lines and, the, and everything, it, it makes a little less sense but um yeah so that was the reason behind the placement it was just physically on site they they located it and certainly if we do um address in future with the municipality the the fence encroachment i think that's something we would get surveyed and we could if in fact that structure um, does encroach that's something that could be included in that yeah i think the fence actually shows clearly that there is that steep embankment and mm -hmm. that the site is quite limited and that uh it seems to be a logical location so um, and actually it is fairly screened from the road there. I think that's quite obvious, right? That it's not... mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely raised up from the road. Yeah, it's... because you almost have to stop there and look up and say, oh yeah, there it is, you know? Um, <laughs> built with a lot of attention, by the way. It's a nice looking structure. Um, and I wanted to ask you, uh, Robin, about the, um, because it was a structure that is, was funded for um, physical, distancing, right? Then if you would locate the structure now that maybe physical distancing is less of an issue, would you put it in the same location or would you have put it somewhere else? Let's make so the sandbox or the covered entry or yeah. both? Well, I think in, in, I think actually it's turned out it would stay in the same location uh, because that's where the um, uh, the existing fences are and they have like a double gate system if you're familiar with that so that you know often it's done with small children and animals <laughs> so you walk in the one gate close it latch it and then you open the second gate so nobody can no small children can escape so that's where they already have that double um, gate system and the drop-off points and so it makes a lot of sense and they're actually finding it's working even better than they realized um, which is so funny with with COVID and lots of these things I think we're discovering is that things are actually working better for them rather than having the parents necessarily come all the way in it's it's being turned out to be a very good drop off point to have it covered there. Um, and, um, and who knows what protocols are necessarily going to continue as we move forward. But um, I think having that drop off point, the hand sanitizer, all of those things, keeping things separate will likely continue, at least for the short term future for them. So it does make a lot of sense to have that that covered area. So as parents come in from the car with the small children, they can be undercover and, and sort their gear out and, and get them transferred over to the care. So it adds to the kind of efficiency and it reduces the congestion kind of? I think so, yeah, because it means lots of uh, less parents and, you know, parents and kids and stuff are coming into that play space and into the building. They're actually just being stopped right at that entry. So the, the handover is happening there. And then the kids, when they come in, are in the play space and can be free to move around and then go in and put their things in the cubby. So I think it's um, providing a lot less congestion and, and use in that existing play area, keeping the drop off outside of that at that, that gate point, as opposed to all of the parents, you know, at that rush hour, at the peak hour, all of the parents moving in and out so I, I think and if we we'd have to ask Anne a little bit more about operations but that's my understanding of how it's being used at the moment and it's working quite well yeah that was great actually um, it's um, as you said it's a uh, fringe benefit of COVID-19 I guess Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we really tried to, you know, it was a little tricky to design given the addition and everything to match the roofs. And we thought this really, you know, minimal lightweight structure was kind of the least impactful and, um, and, and visually, at least visually impactful. Yeah. So is there a chance that part of the structure is over 
the property line as well or not no we've been sure to to design it so that it should be within the property line um okay. and we're quite confident that fence line right there is on the property line so it's going to be built within that and we're meeting with the supplier and to discuss exactly how it's and i think they're reconfiguring the fence a little bit to sort of accommodate it and that um by the way that glass will also cover a little bit of play area a sandbox for the the infant and toddler wing so it's the covering the entries as well as a small play area so it's kind of doing double duty as well right. okay I think that um, many fences are not on property lines. It wouldn't be anything new. And I don't think it's unusual at all, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> well, normally you have to landscape to the curb anyway, and then people kind of forget that there is a property line somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But anyway, it's so, okay. So then going back to um, um, uh, Emma, would you want to do, or are there any other questions from, uh, I think Rick and Chris, you 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 finished your comments, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm fine. So uh, would it make sense, or sorry, um, Steph, would it make sense to do the same and go back to the recommendations? As okay, I'm, I'm kind of hacking away at it here. Um, Spinning on. Can you first, if you, if you have already something done, can you count as an overview of what you have done before? Sorry? Oh, you haven't done anything specific yet, have you? I've done a couple of specific things. So um, I said, whereas the building site location is relatively isolated and the proposed variances are minor and do not affect, negatively affect neighboring views, because there are no neighbors. <laughs> there are no neighbors. I know. I just didn't want to use it there for because we use it later. Um, so maybe say there are no neighbors because it is like it, it's like a totally not an issue at all. Okay. There are no neighbors to be negatively affected. I'll fix this later. Mm -hmm. yeah, Um, uh, whereas the proposed variance is minor. There are two, right? That's... Okay. Um, and then the zoning, is it the CD2, Emma? Comprehensive development, what? Um... Sorry, I believe it's CD2 area six. Sorry, let me, let me just confirm. So what's the intent of... So then maybe if you do an item four, just go ahead a little bit, then it's anticipated that you can maybe say that it's subject to that environmental approval, which they will get anyway. So okay, so I maybe I'll put this down on bullet seven where um, there's sort of some conditions. Awesome. Um so permission. In. Subject to um, what's the name of the body that will um, the development permit? It's probably a development permit application right. and encroachment in the setback of the riparian area. Something Is like there that. a riparian study in that permit? Uh, there should be. So, so Robin, is this a, a development permit application? Or Emma will know. Is this a, a development yeah. application? It's a development permit application, and there'll be an environmental assessment report. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Subject to the environmental. He said. I thought there were twenty or so. I think it's actually. Super. Why you get muted? It, it's subject to implementation off. You know what I mean? It, it's, yeah. If you have to do something with it. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back up to. So if okay. we look at the so permitting only minor variances. So we say. Stiff. Number one. The variance is minor. And then. 
Um, the applicant person notified. Okay, that's in the notes. Undue hardship. <sighs> okay, so okay, maybe okay. Start the first one of them because we kind of need to know where we need to respond. It says, whereas the proposed variants are minor, do we have to explain why they are minor? Um, because they don't have, like, when is, a, when is a variance minor? Because it has no impact or it has little impact on, on, the, um, on the neighborhood, on the setting, on the surroundings, on the surrounding lands or something like that? Yeah, the okay. uh, legislation is a bit fuzzy on what is considered minor, and they really leave it to the board to decide. Okay, so why don't we say because of its isolation, then, whereas the proposed building site location is relatively isolated, there are no neighbors to be affected. And the scale of the proposed improvements, the, 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 the small scale of the proposed improvements. Okay, the scale of the... Proposed improvements. No negative impact on the surrounding lands. So I think it's correct, right? Mm -hmm. No negative impact on the surrounding. You may can change it, but I think something like that there has to be. Mm -hmm. kind of but it's, it's a bit the same as two, you see? Because here we. I have to do this um, <laughs> off-site. <laughs> better than the second two, sorry. Okay. Um, so we're basically, the, the, the idea here is the variances are minor because there are no neighbors. That's the intent of this bullet, yes? I can tweak that. You can make it R small, to have more than one improvement. Okay. And then what's the intent of the zoning, Emma? So it's a part of uh, Cates Hill Comprehensive Development Area. So that's CD2 Area 6. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little blurb on the intent in the land use bylaw I can read out really quickly. It's uh, to recognize a comprehensively planned area called Cates Hill Village, which includes a residential neighborhood established in 2000, parks and recreation facilities, nature conservation lands, local commercial services and community facilities, such as a school, church, daycare, and teen center. Covenants were registered on lots to protect Terminal Creek, which is the creek that is right next to this property. Yeah. So do you wanna, we can quote that for this bullet. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big blurb. Um, I don't know if you want to quote it, but uh, or, or just say whether or not you feel this is consistent with that intent and doesn't defeat the intent. So it sounds like it, it's the zoning is to to make a, a community neighborhood with community facilities and services. I think you can just refer to the intent and not be specifically um, right it here, because if anybody wants to check that, then they just have to look it up. Whereas the intent of It is respected or something like that, or is it here too? Oh, I like respected. Or it respected, implemented, or here too. So you don't want to be specific to say like the community, community, and something aspects of the intent? No, not really, because I think that if anybody would object to the decision mm -hmm. of the board, then. Okay. They would just refer to item three. They have they were forced to read that item and okay. realize that the school is a uh, anticipated use and that they cannot really conclude that it doesn't meet the intent of the Bible. Okay. Okay, so the intent is respected and then so adverse impact on the, the environment, no negative environmental impact, particularly on the aligning creek is anticipated and that's later addressed with- Mutual terminal creek. On terminal with. We kind of know what it is. Okay. 
Okay. And then. Yeah, so if you go to the topography, it is really quite extreme, right? So you can uh, emphasize that because the. Uh, uh, okay, so with the, is it just the steep drops from the building well, site to parking in the creek? I think if you say the steep topography, it's maybe okay. not anybody who goes there can confirm that. Because it, it, I think it captures it, you know? Okay. Whether it's a question. Okay, the fire person uh, is from our previous uh, applicants. <laughs> Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, Chris. I'll put you on the speakerphone here, okay? Okay. Uh, Chris, is, uh, Chris is on my uh, landline here, and I put him on the speakerphone. Okay. So Chris, can you speak for a sec? Chris, please say something. What? You want me to say something? Yeah. Okay, I'm saying something. So Chris has said he's going to participate in the vote when we come to that point. Okay. And he's calling me on the cell phone because his iPad died. <laughs> okay, so then a little bit later, Chris will uh, I'll, uh, we'll read out the uh, where we are. Or maybe if you can... Do you feel like that's covered all of these? Well, he can probably hear everything. So the bylaw has been respected. Up until you almost were finished with that. So I, I know where we're at. Uh, he knows where we're at. The, the eight seconds ago. Do you want yes. to say um, permitted uses or densities have not been varied? Uh, can you go back to your chat? Sure. Oh. Have not been permitted uses have not been varied. Ah, that's a good point. Did we say that? Yeah, you can say that because whereas permitted there was no need to vary uh, permitted users. Have not been varied. Yeah, yeah so I can't get you any louder, Chris. So. And Development is appropriate. Is that what they said about inappropriate development here? Yeah, I would say it, it's definitely appropriate for it for uh, for a preschool, you know. So six. I think this is a good idea. We didn't really do this in the other one. Appropriate to existing use or something. Okay, so where permitted uses and density have not been varied, where the proposed development, where the permit, sorry, where you five, right? Where permitted uses and density have not been varied, right? So then it was the point from, um, but it is by the, by the kind of subjects, right? Um, when um, Rick made some comments, you know, for the uh, making sure that the safety is provided. Yeah, so I put that as number uh, B, 7B. Subjects, right? Yeah, okay. So it's sort of like the whereas is are all in support, and then therefore we resolve that the application be allowed with the following recommendations. One, that the fence encroachment on the statutory right of way be addressed in the future. Two, that safety issues be considered. Yeah, that's, that sounds good to me. Um, can you go up and, and add the that the existing, that the proposed, is it called the canopy? What is the name of it? Uh, the proposed structure, um, that it will significantly improve the, 
efficiency and um, what's the other word? And congestion. Oh. Well, it will it will increase the efficiency and safety of um, dropping off and picking up um, children from the um, preschool. Uh, and that the anticipated congestion from cars will be reduced, but it's in, uh, it will have a positive effect because it reduces congestion of vehicles. A lot of schools have that issue actually. <laughs> Is it traffic congestion? Oh, it's crazy. Like, I mean, maybe in Bowen it's not that bad, but if you go to West Vancouver and you see how kids are, are delivered to school, it's just like, you know, they have to put in traffic lights around schools. And <laughs> it's lineups and lineups and cars and cars. And okay, so that's. So it has a, you know, it's. It, that yeah, kind of, that's the hardship but, then. No, that is the, well, I mean, it stands in the rain, that is that hardship, but like, I don't know, but like it. it Getting hit by a car is hardship? No, the hardship, I think we address because this hard okay. is very, very can build, right? And it's steep and whatever. And this is more like, you know, what the positive effects are of uh, the proposal. Okay. Are you writing some more stuff or not? Yeah, I wrote it here. It's number five. Oh, okay. Whereas the proposed structure will significantly increase the efficiency and safety of dropping off and picking up of children from daycare and that the anticipated traffic congestion will be reduced. You're amazing. Yes. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, you're so well trained. You know, all these meetings, right? <laughs> this is great. Yeah. So um, does anybody else want to add something to this? Uh, Emma, does it look good to you? Is this somewhere that we have? Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, 8C. 8C. Permission is subject to implementation of the environmental assessment. Um, the, the only mechanism we have for that is issuance of the development permit. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of saying subject to implementation of the environmental report, I would say subject to issuance of the required development permit. And then it's up to the building expect, inspector to chase them. Yeah. And then you say including implementation of the environmental system. Okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay. So that's it. Uh, Emma, nothing else? Can I make one small kind? I just noticed um, line eight on the second line down, it says 650 and it's missing Carter Road. Just, it says 650 oh. Road. I just thought I'd point that out. Thank you. Good point. Okay. So are we, um, are we ready to vote at this point? Uh, Chris, are you somewhere? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm going in. See, he's responding. I just wonder if, if, if we had to consider making a contingency on confirming by survey the location of the two variant items. Yeah, so what Chris is saying, but um, we kind of spoke about it, but what Chris was saying, should there be some kind of contingency on uh, confirming with the survey that the structures are within the property. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I just don't know if it's totally necessary, but because it could stop the whole project in its tracks maybe. But um, Emma, what do you think? Or do you have a comment there? Emma, you're still muted. So did you hear what Chris was saying? Yes. Um, yeah, and I, I think that that is um, that is a good idea. <laughs> um, 
my understanding is that we are working off of some uh, an older survey plan. Um, so I think I'm at this point for for the uh, scale of development proposed planning is satisfied with with the information provided. Um, but definitely it, it is a good idea and I think if at the building stage um, if concerns come up regarding the siting, then maybe a, a survey will be required during the building stage. So can we leave it up to the building inspector then? Something that, because like what I'm afraid of is that, um, let's say if the sandbox would be slightly over the property line, right? I mean, again, there's so many structures on Bowen that are over property lines. And I know we should avoid that. On the other hand, it is built and it's, you know, I, mm -hmm. I find it a bit scary, you know, but I think Chris is right. But then we mm -hmm. want it to be some kind of a, something that would stop the whole development, you know what I mean? Well, so, yes. the, the variance requested is for zero. It's a, a zero lot line uh, setback. So essentially the the structure can go right up to the property line and anything over the property line would not fall under the uh the, the jurisdiction of a variance anyway do you know what i mean so if there were any encroachments onto municipal land that would be a separate separate issue that would have to be um, addressed through an encroachment agreement or license to occupy it would be separate from a variance Chris, what are you saying? If, if it were. I think the issue is, do we know what we're approving uh, with the variance approval? Yeah, so if you, um, okay, so Chris is saying, do we know what we are approving with the, um, the Board of Variance approval? And I think Emma kind of um, answered that. Um, so Emma, you basically say that we give the approval which goes up to the property line. And then we can probably be silent about the rest because Emma says that then it's up to uh, the at the building permit stage or for the building for the build, building inspector uh, may decide how to enforce that. Is that correct, Emma? Or like, like I'm trying to. Uh, well, I guess yeah. The building inspector reserves the right to require a survey um, during the building stage. If it is found that there are any encroachments, uh, part of the structure is on municipal land and not on the private property, that would not be dealt with through a variance. It would have to then go to a different, different mechanism, either through an encroachment agreement or a license to occupy, and that would be issued through public works in the municipality, and it would be completely separate from the variance. Right. Chris, may I make a quick comment? Yeah. I'd like to make a comment. Wait a second, Chris is saying something. Chris, can you repeat that? Um, the issue here is if you limit the survey request to just the two encroachment issues, it, it probably would be prudent for the owner to pursue that as part of this step in the process rather than get into the building, actual building, even to the permit stage. If there's any question about whether this is going to encroach within the municipal uh, right of way outside the boundary of the setback. Yeah, so Chris is saying from would it would it be better that we actually mention it so that the um, the, the applicants or the, the owners uh, deal with this before it may come up uh, in a building permit application. But you know, um, Robin, for the structure that you're going to build at the at the front, right? Um, it would make sense that the survey is done for that, so that you can adjust. It's not built yet, right? So the that it can be adjusted as required. You know, you, you may have to trim it two inches or so, or whatever. <laughs> it's normal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
No, and I think I, that's acceptable. I think for that existing or the proposed structure that isn't built yet, I think that's a really reasonable request. And then I was going to suggest you've got point eight A there that perhaps instead of saying that the fence encroachment, maybe say that any encroachment on the SRO, because so, the, the play box, the sand structure is there. So if it encroaches or uh, not at the moment, like you say, Emma, it's not really it's um, not really a board of parents issue. It, it's an encroachment issue. So maybe that's something that we should uh, address in the future and hopefully sooner in the future. And then but if it's the fence and or this play structure or the, the roof structure, then that can be addressed. Um, and yeah, I, I think um, I mean, certainly at this point, any additional cost and time is a little bit of a burden on the project, but um, I can't argue that it's a reasonable thing for us to have a survey to lay out um, this proposed structure at that front entry. That makes sense. So Chris, the where the big doors are, so to speak, and where they have their, their largest risk at the front structure, uh, Roman says that because it hasn't been built yet, and the design can still be adjusted if it would be, uh, you know, uh, part, if it would, what do you call it, um, go past the property line, <laughs> sorry. Um, the sandbox is a little bit different, the structure has been built. So then uh, maybe we just make this comment related to the, um, and it's also a smaller structure, it's less of an issue, I think. But uh, if we can make that your comment specifically to the canopy at the front, that would, in my mind, to be the best. And then the survey is probably completed anyway, right, Robin, at least for the property line. Yeah, we can have a survey done specifically of that front area and have it, it, it marked out. So it's, we, we ensure that the new structure is built within the property line. Yeah, so if you if you put that in, uh, uh, Steph, what uh, Robin just said. That a survey be conducted at the front. Yeah, along, along uh, Carter Road, yeah. Along the Carter Road. Okay. At the proposed um, glass canopy, maybe that's kind of specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah, say at the proposed glass canopy. To ensure to ensure yeah, that the, the, the new structure is within the property line. Sorry, Fritz, I'm talking <laughs> No, no, if you say, no, no, Roman, you're, you're fine. But uh, I meant like, it has to say the proposed glass structure. Okay. That the proposed glass structure is within the property line. And you know, the sandbox is just such a minor, it's probably better just to leave that. Yeah, we, we don't want these parents and all that to get totally frustrated. and move the sandbox structure like whatever 10 inches or so or five inches but it makes the it's a good point chris i think it makes everybody aware and uh it's uh, definitely appreciated yeah i think it's better to report yeah well yeah it's good to have it in here and then yeah for sure <clears throat> Would someone like to read it? Okay. Um, Chris, are you listening? Yeah. I want to read it because you can hear me the best here from the uh, speakerphone, right? Where, whereas the scale of the proposed improvements are small, do not negatively impact surrounding neighbors' views as there are none, and the variances are minor. Item two. There are no, there are no views or no... Well, there's no neighbor's views, it says. That's like the neighbor's views are absent. Yeah, the neighbor's views are absent. Can you, can you no, say anything to that? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so there are no neighbors, so there are no neighboring views, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I think <laughs> Steph will pick that up. I'll fix it offline. I just, it's a weird concept that needs quiet reflection. Yeah, it's <laughs> She's going to work it out, okay? She has the whole yeah. day to do that. <laughs> okay, item two, whereas the intent of the land use bylaw number 57, 2001, zoning CB2 area six is respected. 
And Emma has read that out and it's clearly uh, conforming to the intent of the, of the zoning bylaw. Item three, whereas no negative environmental impact, particularly on the aligning terminal creek, is anticipated. Item four, whereas the applicant has demonstrated that the steep topography of the property results in limited suitable building area and causes undue hardship. Item five, whereas the proposed structure will significantly increase the efficiency and safety of dropping off and picking up of children from daycare and the anticipated traffic congestion will be reduced. Maybe say and related, anticipated, well, that's fine. Uh, six, whereas permitted uses and density have not been varied. Seven, whereas the proposed development is appropriate. Eight, therefore be it, eight, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Variance application number BOP 2021 within brackets, daycare center on 650 Carter Road be allowed with the following recommendations. A, that the encroachment on the statutory right-of-way be addressed in the future. B, that the survey be conducted to ensure that the proposed glass structure is within the property line. C, that safety issues be addressed by consideration of installing of boards or additional boulders. And D, that permission be subject to issuance of the required development permit, which includes implementation of the environmental assessment report. And Good. Okay, Chris, could you hear all that? I, I heard and I, I am fine with all that. Chris is fine with all that. Can we do like move or second or all in favor? Uh, so Chris, are you moving it? I approve. Okay. I, so, um, Steph? Mm -hmm. So, Chris moved the, 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 uh, the motion, so to speak. <laughs> Is that correct? Mm, yeah. And, and uh, seconded by? Rick? Rick? I agree. Rick, a second. And okay. Yes. So number vote. All in favor? Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's confirmed by uh, Chris. All in favor? Ooh. Okay. Okay, great. Well, again, Emma, thank you very much. Steph, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are tough. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> great discussion. Good Thanks, work. everybody. Great day. Okay, cheers. Thanks. Good job. Bye bye. Okay, hey, Chris, you're allowed to go. You're allowed to go out of your vehicle now. Ah, uh, he's like. I think